On today's show here at Things I Love, we're answering that age-old question, what is better, the book or the movie? Welcome to Things I Love. Here on show number 22, today we're talking all about books. So you might be wondering, what is this all about here? I'm going to get into this in just a moment. Here with my wife, Lisa, today and my daughter, Emily. If you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button down below to get these amazing positive videos every single week. We talk about Disney, we talk about Lego, we talk about all kinds of fun stuff. And like I said, today we're getting into books because tomorrow, August 9th, is National Book Lovers Day. All right, what's the elephant in the room? Well, today uh, we're going to talk about our next toy, toy update. update. <laughs> we went to the flea market um, last week, week before last. Yeah. Um, and when I go to the flea market, uh, I'm really usually not looking for anything. I just kind of walk around and take it all in. And, and uh, I happened to come across this, and I, I got to say, it was almost glowing. Um, but I, I thought, there's no way that I can afford this. Uh, but I walked up, and the guy said, 25 bucks and my jaw about hit the, the dirt floor. <laughs> so I, I said, look, I'm gonna go um, walk around a little bit and I might come back. Um, so I did that and I began to look up on, on my phone, you know, uh, how much it's worth. And, and it's, it's called a Revere 8 projector. It is a, an eight millimeter projector. It's from the 1940s. This thing is in great shape. And he told me um, that it was broken. He said, this down here doesn't work very well. It doesn't um, thread well. He, he showed me the four screws here that I could get into it and fix it myself. So I thought, for 25 bucks, all right, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Um, so I did it and got it home and went on uh, YouTube, of course, and, and found out that you can, um, you can thread this a certain way. Um, and it, it absolutely works. It works. So I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to show you. Here we go. Oh, it's quite loud. But there you go. It works. Now, the film that came with it, the film that came with it didn't have anything on it. Um, but that's cool. I'm going to find some, some Disney films. I looked on eBay and I'm going to kind of get some, some stuff there. But I wanted to show you this because it really does fit in with what we're talking about today. Uh, like I said, National Book Lovers Day tomorrow. I'm going to put this right over here because um, we're going to be piling up some books here. Um, and I thought the best people to be with me on this show today uh, are, are my girls here, Lisa and Emily, because they love reading, right? That's right. <laughs> Lisa's a teacher, um, but it's been an incredibly busy week that we've had getting ready for school, and uh, we'd, we'd really like to be taking a nap right now. <laughs> but I, I wanted to bring this to you. And I thought it would be best to have them with me because they love to read. I uh, don't love it as much as they do. I would much rather watch watch the film, watch the movie. Um, but um, I do have some of my favorites as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into it and have Lisa share with, with you uh, her favorite children's books because she is a fourth grade teacher. Woo woo! <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think she's going to share with you some of her favorite books um, for the, the few quiet times that she does have in life. Uh, then Lisa, and uh, then, uh, sorry, Emily, Lisa's over here, Emily's going to share with you uh, some of her favorite young adult books, and then I'll share with you some of mine. Um, but hopefully it will, it will help you today. Uh, if you're not a, a reader, we've got some, i got some tips for you. If you are, maybe there's just some good books uh, for you to read. All right, take it away. I read children's books a lot because I think reading is the most important thing that you do, and reading is in reading, writing, math, science, and social studies and I find that it's important to read aloud to kids every day. So I found some really good books that um, kids have resonated with. And um, the first one I wanna talk about is The One and Only Ivan. And it is coming out in movie form. I kind of don't like it when they do that to my favorite books because <laughs> most of the time they, the kids stop reading the book and go, they're like, oh, I've seen that movie, I don't need to read the book. No, it is coming out or it has come out? It is coming it out. It is coming out. So, um, The One and Only Ivan is based on an act, on actual events. There was a mall in Oklahoma that housed animals. And 
um, they were like circus animals. Um, they were not treated very well, and subsequently, you have animals in a mall. So it's like the mall and Stranger Things. Uh, no, oh. it's not. It was um, in the book. <laughs> it is called the Big uh, Exit Eight Big Top Mall and Video Arcade. Wow. And no, yeah, I've read this book a lot. <laughs> Um, I read this book every year, but the main character in the book is Ivan, and he is a silverback gorilla, and the story is told from his point of view, and so it's interesting, um, he, how he talks about humans, um, how he views humans, and I also like that the chapters are really, really short, um, the first line in the book is probably one of the best beginnings of any book I've ever read. Um, and this actually the first chapter, it says, I am Ivan. I am a gorilla. It's not as easy as it looks. And <laughs> that um, does look pretty easy, that's <laughs> one of the best <laughs> first lines in a book. But you get to meet the characters, Ivan, Stella, Bob, the dog, um, who thinks people don't know he's there. Um, and so it's, it's a story about friendship. Um, it, there are sad parts. My students always ask me why I read them sad books, and I say because that's life. And <laughs> we can learn a lot from sad stories, but uh, this is an excellent book. Um, it is about a fourth grade uh, level. Um, so if you have, if you want to read it to younger kids, it's a great book to read to younger kids, but um, fourth grade is a perfect age 9 10 is a good age to read this book for the first time that's my well, first good, favorite yeah. let's put this one out like here then the next one is wonder and i know it was made into a movie i am very sad it was made into a movie Wait, that, wasn't that a was a good movie. movie i know but the book is better <laughs> the book is better i guess we're answering that yeah, question that today yeah. um of course i always think the book's better but um <laughs> this book is about augie and it is a fiction story, but it is about uh, August Pullman, and he lives in New York, and um, he is uh, has been homeschooled. He has a craniofacial deformity, and so he has never been to public school or any kind of school, and he goes to Beecher Prep for the first time. And it talks about his struggles of fitting in, and... Um, it is a challenging book to read. It is a good book to teach empathy. Um, there are parts in the book that make me cry because I can't stand it when kids are mean to each other. But um, this is an excellent book. Again, I would recommend it probably for fourth and fifth graders. Younger kids probably wouldn't understand it as much. Yeah, I would say that the movie is good though. It um, is from, a good movie. From though. a perspective of someone who has not read the book, uh, that's often where I come from, um, it's a great movie. Um, yes, so sad good. movie. It and it is another sad story, but it has a happy ending. So, um, <laughs> poor kids, they have to hear all these sad stories. This book <laughs> um, by Richard Peck is a wonderfully humorous book. Um, it is historical fiction. It is a Newbery Honor book. Um, he has a series of books that have some of the same characters. Uh, a long way from Chicago and it's set in the 1930s and um, the main characters in the book are a grandmother and her, her two grandchildren. I believe this one is told from it's the grandchildren's um, perspective. Yeah, grandchildren's perspective. You the really grandson's know. perspective. There's another one told from the granddaughter's perspective. Um, but Grandma Dowdle does all sorts of crazy things in the book and um, Shout out to McKay's Books um, <laughs> here in Nashville because this book costs 50 cents there and it is in perfect condition. Yeah, and that is one of the things we wanted to mention today is, is places you can find books aside from your regular Barnes & Noble store, which those are becoming harder to find. Um, it's just your local used bookstore. Um, great, great little shops out there. Yeah, that McKay's has excellent um, quality books, and they're also quite inexpensive. The regular price on this was six ninety nine, and I got it for fifty cents. They got great vinyls so there too. This is an excellent <laughs> book. The reading level I actually have on this is um, grade level five, and it's worth um, five AR points if anybody's doing accelerated reader. <laughs> but um, that's a really humorous book. One of my favorite 
parts is one of the chapters is Shotgun Cheatham's Last Night Above Ground, <laughs> where uh, Grandma holds a wake for um, a penniless man in her house, and there's kind of an uh, incident with a cat who gets in the coffin. It's, it's pretty fun. Incidents with cats. Anyway. Uh, you're right. So, the last children's book I want to talk about is The Great Gilly Hopkins. Again, shout out to McKay's, 25 cents. I've been able to buy a whole class set of this for my for my students. It's also a Newbery Honor book. This one's an older book. Gilly is um, a girl in foster care, um, and she believes her mother's coming back. She only has a postcard from her mother. Um, she has a mouth on her, so I don't <laughs> recommend this for younger don't we children. All? Uh, when I read it aloud to my class, I um, leave out some words um, that are inappropriate, but it's an it's another good book for teaching empathy. Um, sometimes people that are rough on the outside that make poor choices, are, they do it because they want love. And awesome. this is an excellent book um, with a great happy ending. So I would ask then, if somebody was just gonna start with one of these, which which one would you say is the number one you should start with? One and only Ivan. That's the one I would start this with. One? Yeah. And I would yeah. probably, um, that's the easiest one uh, to read. And uh, just depends on what you like. I mean, the one, one and only yeah. Ivan is fantasy, pr well, it's realistic fiction in a way, based on a true story, but it's but told from an animal. Talk. The animals don't talk in real life, so <laughs> that's what? fantasy. <laughs> you had Have no you not idea. Seen the Oh, which we're going to talk about that in a few weeks. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, all right, your favorite books. Then. My favorite grown up books. The first one I don't have a copy of because I actually loaned the copy to someone. The book was so good, and then I never That's got it what back. That's what you do with good books, right? Um, so, the first book I want to talk about is The Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet. It is. Um, which, by the way, I'll put links in the show notes to all these books so you can get them. Um, but it is a story, um, historical fiction set in the 40s in California, um, not California, but on the West Coast. I think it's in Washington or Oregon. And um, the main character is a Japanese American. And he truly is a Japanese American. Uh, been in America all his life of Japanese descent. And he deals with what happened in the 40s after Pearl Harbor, where the family is sent to an internment camp. And um, it was a historically eye-opening for me. It sent me looking at real history about what happened in our own country during that time. So that's a really great book. Um, the next book is by one of my favorite authors, Francine Rivers. Um, great she, name. Yes, she <laughs> was a um, she's an award-winning author um, that was in the secular arena and then um, became a Christian and began writing Christian fiction. It's not sappy Christian fiction because I really, um, I, I want real life whenever I'm talking when I read books. But Leota's Garden is just a, just to say this though. I think the Christian novels and Christian movies have gotten better, better yeah. over the over time. Yes, they're not as sappy. They're not as um, they're much better written and um, better produced and directed. And all that right, thing. and and. I find that what I, and I teach this to my students too, is what you read goes into your mind. Everything that you put into your mind will eventually come out of your mouth yeah. and or will come back. And so I want to make sure I'm always putting good things in my head. So this book, Leota's Garden, is about Leota, an older woman, and a girl who comes to stay with her. And Leota's roses are incredible. And Leota tells the girl who's living with her, when I die, I want to be cremated and spread on my rose bushes. It is an excellent story of sad. yeah, the sound kind of sad. It's, another it's sad a, it's, book. It's not really sad. It's a story of friendship between uh, across generations. So it's a really great story. Um, the next book is The Mountain Between Us. Do not see the movie. It's terrible. <laughs> Yeah, Terrible I, I, movie. Can, I can even say it wasn't a good movie, and I didn't read oh, it. Oh, is it awful? It's not even like the book. So yeah. if you saw the movie, read the book. So much better. Not even the same story. <laughs> um, this book is about uh, a man and a woman, and they are not romantically involved. Unlike the movie. Unlike the movie. Um, so the cover of this one shows the characters in the movie. Great actor. Yeah. Great actress. Yeah. Just not a good story. Um, they are not romantically involved. They are in a plane 
and it crashes in the mountains and they have to survive. There's a second side story that wasn't in the movie at all um, between the man who is a doctor and his wife over a uh, voice recorder. So it's a pretty cool book. Um, there's a surprise ending and I will not give it away, um, but it's an excellent book. Charles Martin is also a Christian author. His writing is just thought provoking and deep and just really explores reality in humans and, and their emotions and their relationships with others. So that's pretty cool. It is a cool title, Mountain Between uh -huh. Us. And that's got a double meaning, so. Yeah. It's good, but no romance. <laughs> romance is not a bad thing. No, but, but the <laughs> book did not, I mean, the movie did not need it. The book could have stood on its own. You're right. Yes, it was, yep. it's, the book was so much better. Um, and the last one that um, has been loved many times by several of our family members. Yeah, our daughter Samantha, who's not here today, loves this book. And she's not much of a reader, but she has read this book over and over and over again. And I actually got this book, shout out to Anchorage, Alaska, at Tidal Wave Books, which is a used bookstore yep. in Anchorage, Alaska. I got it for $3.99, so it's not $0.25, cents, but I got it for pretty good. Cheap. So, <laughs> good um, it was new, though. It said it was recycled, but it looked brand new. It doesn't look brand new anymore. <laughs> this one is actually a memoir, so it's not fiction. It is cool, though, how they, sometimes they make the, uh, the, the pages, pages look, old. look old and yeah. torn. Pretty cool. So it's about, it's written by a woman who um, was the first woman on the um, sale floor at Tiffany in New York City um, during uh, World War II because the men were off at war. They, they, in the past, had only had men on the sales floor. And she meets all sorts of famous people, and it is a true story. It's pretty cool. So there are my favorite Interesting little books. bit of trivia, uh, the school that uh, Lisa taught at in New York City and the school that Emily and Samantha went to, the, the boarding students lived upstairs from Tiffany. Um, scholarships, woo woo! <laughs> All right. All right, so um, those are Lisa's books. And then what do we got there for you, Miss Emily? My first book is The Fault in Our Stars, and I know it's really basic, like it's a movie. everybody hears about it. As well. The movie is really good. Like See? the movie is exactly the same as the book. It's romantic. Wow. It's not all romantic. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good though. This I also got at McKay's for I think a dollar because it doesn't have the book jacket. But basically Who needs a book jacket? I know, right? If you can get it for cheap. <laughs> a cold book. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Hey was... <laughs> a book jacket, a cold book, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> basically, this is about a girl with cancer. So she goes to the support group and she really doesn't like people. Then she meets this guy and they go like they exchange books and they both fall in love with this author and they decide to for her make a wish foundation trip to go visit the author and get the ending to the book because the author never put it in the story so that's pretty much what it is and yes it is romantic it's it's good though what 16 so. year old girl doesn't like a romance novel it's good doesn't have fabio in it though does it no. you don't even know who fabio is i actually do oh you do i'm, not I'm gonna put this down here because there's no book jacket um <laughs> my second book actually i don't have with me because i got it from the library but it's caraval and how you spell that? C A R A V A L. Oh, that's right. I just put the picture up in front of you. Oh, well, <laughs> hopefully it's right. It should be right. But that book, I got it from the library, and it's it's a pretty long book, but it's fantasy about this girl who goes to this like quest, like scavenger hunt kind of thing, and meets all these people and goes through these challenges. It's kind of like a mystery, and. It's really complicated, but I feel like it's probably the best book I've ever read because of the complications in it, of just like the like hunt and like the people are so, so like different. So what's the core part of the story? There's a scavenger hunt. Okay. And there's a bunch of bad stuff that happens. Ah. That's pretty much the basis of the story. It's also romantic, but it's really good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and the there's like a bunch of like princes and princesses in it, if that's interesting to you. So. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, and then my third book is Cinder. It's Which about, has the coolest cover it's ever. It's really cool. Yeah. I also got this in McKay's. And it's about, it's a retelling of Cinderella. And it's a, this is the first book in the series. Um, 
basically it's like a robot Cinderella. So stop laughing. It's I'm serious. sorry. You got me. It's sorry. a serious <laughs> topic. They better make a movie out of that. They are. Actually, are they? they're making a movie out Sweet. of all of them. The robot Cinderella. <laughs> so basically it's just a whole town of robots and it's the exact story of Cinderella, but she's um it's set in New Beijing instead of like some weird fantasy town. Because yeah, like New town, Beijing but... is a real place. <laughs> <laughs> but it's supposed to be like Chinese. All the like stuff is like Chinese and stuff. So if you like Cinderella, it's a good new take on it because Sweet. it's just completely different, but also awesome. like the same. So. And then my last book, I also got at McKay's. It's If I Stay, which is also pretty basic. But it's really good. <laughs> and the girl, it's about this girl who gets in a car accident. And the whole story is like a flashback of what could have happened and what has happened in her life. And she's a musician. I think she plays the cello. And so it's basically her mind while she's in a coma telling her, this is all the stuff you're going to miss out on if you die. So it's like, it's really sad. But it's <laughs> convincing her, it's like convincing her to stay alive through her past memories and like what she has to live for. So it's really interesting to see like all the like choices she's made to stay alive and like thinking about like what if that was actually a thing. But it's really <laughs> interesting. If and I stay. Yeah, it's really good. Cool. All right, so good. there you got her books there. Get a nice little pile going here. And then let's see. Just go there. That's fine. <laughs> Um, so my books, uh, like I said, I, I am not as big of a reader as, as they are. Um, I typically like to read for um, knowledge, you know, nonfiction, something I can learn from. Um, but every once in a while, I will venture out and try something. Um, and there's a few that have really caught my attention. One of those, um, I'm actually in the middle of it right now, but um, I, I looked up, okay, what's the best way to get started into the Star Wars um, novel world? Because they are... There's tons of Star Wars books out there, um, and so I, you're gonna if you're a Star Wars fan, you're already gonna know which one this one is. But I went with *Heir to the Empire*, uh, Timothy Zahn, and so far I love this uh, novel. Um, it was written a long time ago, actually, in the, in the galaxy far, far away. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, but it's got um, stories uh, that you're familiar with: Han Solo and Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia and. Or, uh, not princess in this book, but uh, it weaves all that into kind of a new story of Thrawn. Um, and so, so far I'm loving it. Um, in and you read it while you drive, right? Nope. I don't read while I drive. I thought it was you an audio book. <laughs> not that one. Not that oh, one. Oh, okay. So I do read that one on my iPad. Uh, so I don't have it with me right now. Um, I, I like to read mostly on my iPad. Um, but I do uh, listen to books too. One thing I wanted to bring up, I don't think we brought it up earlier when you were talking about your books, but uh, you read a lot on your Kindle. Yeah. Um, and we just wanted to talk about the different ways that you can read things and you're familiar with Kindle, I'm sure. Uh, but you may not be familiar with Kindle Unlimited. And so before I keep going with mine, uh, I'll let Lisa just share a little bit about Kindle Unlimited. Well, it was a gift from my lovely husband. That's all you need to know. Okay, so. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I read a lot. And um, in the summertime, I read about a book a week. And um, books can get expensive, even at 50 cents a pop and mm. the gas to get out to McKay's. But um, it, uh, there are so many books on Kindle Unlimited. And it's, it's through the Kindle, but it's a subscription service. And I believe it's about $10 a month. Um, is it 10? Yeah. I think it's about $10 yeah, a month. Book. And you can read as many books on that are in the Kindle Unlimited library as possible. Now, not all the books that I like are in the Kindle Unlimited library, but I can always find something. It's a really easy way to search in your Kindle, and then you just um, refine your search into Kindle Unlimited, and it'll give you um, lots of books to read, both audiobooks and um, paper, well, printed books, mm -hmm. and then you can also um, read magazines, newspapers, you can read children's books, adult books, whatever genre you like um, through that $10 subscription. Yeah. So correct me if I'm wrong here, but I kind of feel like Kindle Unlimited is is uh, great for people who are voracious readers. They just want to read, 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 and they don't 
they don't really care about the next greatest book that's coming out. Would that be correct? That would be correct because it does often, um, if they're really well-known authors, for example, Francine Rivers, um, her books are not going to be on Kindle Unlimited immediately. Yeah. Oftentimes, like it would be on a subscription service like Netflix. Um, oftentimes, the you have to wait a while before they come out. Um, but mm. you can also, I mean, if you ha if you could balance Kindle Unlimited with purchasing um, books through Kindle, that if yeah, you really can't wait, then that would be a good yeah. a good way to do that. But if you just want like the newest New York Times bestsellers that are coming out and everything, it may not be the right thing for you. But if you just read a lot, then it would be um, like Lisa does. And um, you can have ten books. You can have ten books in your library at a time if they are unlimited books. Yeah. Um, just kind of like a, a checkout service from the library. Okay. So my first one again was Heir to the Empire, Timothy Zahn. Um, and then uh, I'll just go ahead and skip this next one and go to what you were talking about earlier, and that is um, uh, Audible. So audible.com uh, is a great way to listen to books. Um, they've done a fantastic job of making books sound like a movie. I mean, they've got, they've got the, all the background sounds whenever they're talking about a motorcycle. Um, you'll hear the motorcycle. Um, you know, there, there's a fight scene. You'll hear the fight. Um, so, I, my favorite that I've listened to recently is Ahsoka um, by E.K. Johnston. Um, and I love it. It's voiced by Ashley Eckstein, who actually plays Ahsoka um, in The Clone Wars. Um, so, you've got, if you watch The Clone Wars, you've already got that voice. Um, it, you know, it works well. Um, so, uh, Ahsoka on audible.com. Check it out. I'm going to be putting links again in the bottom in the show notes so you'll have everything that you need there. Um, all right. So, my um, third one here is uh, Walt Disney. Uh, surprise, surprise. Um, I love this biography of Walt Disney uh, by Bob Thomas. There are lots of choices out there, lots of great books about Walt Disney. Um, I actually found this on my iPad. We were going to, to Disney World um, a couple trips ago, and I just wanted to read about Disney uh, on our way there. So I grabbed this on my iPad, and I read it um, between the two plane trips, because uh, at the time we were going from Alaska, and that's a long plane ride. <laughs> so I could read this whole thing in, in two plane trips. Um, but really, really great um, biography of Walt Disney. Uh, by Bob Thomas, so check that out. I went into a McKay's and got this because I wanted a hard copy uh, for my shelf back here. So you got that one, um, and and it has Mickey. Yeah. And then one of my favorite books, just of all time, um, is a book that I came across called Secrets of the Secret Place. Uh, it's by Bob Sorge. Uh, Bob Sorge used to be a pastor, just like myself, and he lost his voice. Um, just lost it one day. Um, no idea why, uh, but he discovered uh, through his relationship with Christ um, that you know God allowed that to happen in his life for a reason. And now he's a, he's a prolific author, um, and he's still a speaker. And when he speaks, uh, you really listen um, because they have to turn the mic way up to get his his, his growly voice to, to come through. But it's uh, amazing when he speaks. And, and Secrets of the Secret Place is just one of his uh, multiple books that he's written, and it's it's just simply a book to help you. Um, spend time with God um, and that may be a foreign concept to some of you um, but you can as a, as a follower of Jesus Christ you can spend time with God um, but you may need a little help to figure out what that means and so he wrote this book called Secrets of the Secret Place that really uh, helps out with that it's kind of written it's not a devotional in the sense that it's an everyday thing for a month but it has like 28 or 29 chapters so it can be done over the course of a month I highly recommend it Secrets of the secret place um, and then uh, I also wanted to show this massive book to you uh, I'm a big Harry Potter fan we haven't talked a lot about Harry Potter on this channel but you've seen some of my Harry Potter Lego behind me um, I, I'm a big Harry Potter fan I think we all here are um, we love Harry Potter um, Lisa students I'm sure read this fourth grade that's about the, the time yeah, that they're reading. I, I, I can't um, read Harry Potter just because <laughs> I prefer other books besides fantasy. Yeah, you're not my, much student, of fantasy right? my students really love Harry Potter. Um, but I love the films, and I read the uh, the first novel on the subway while we lived in New York City. Just read it like the 10 minutes that I had to, to work every day. But being a lover of the movies and um, and a lover of the book as well, uh, this this book is amazing. You may have seen these before, but they just kind of go through uh, the movie uh, kind of scene by scene and, and various. Um, costumes and stuff that they talk about and then they they write about it and um, 
So you could say it's a picture book. It definitely is a picture book. But anyway, I love this book, uh, Harry Potter page to screen. You can get these for lots of different movies, um, but love that. So I want to end today by taking us back to, that's a heavy book right that's there. It's like 10 pounds right there. By taking us back to, uh, to film again. Um, I'm a huge film buff, uh, love movies. Um, and a lot of these books are made into movies. We've said some of them are good, some of them are bad. Um, but this is a book that we read as a family years ago when it when it was written, Hugo Cabret by Brian Selznick. And he's written other books. I've um, met him. He signed yeah, a book for Oh, it. there you go. Houdini um, Box. Yeah, Houdini, That's Houdini cool. Box. Um, he's just a great author, but he's also a, an amazing um, illustrator. illustrator. Yeah. Just does some really great uh, pencil illustrations. Uh, if I can find some more here. Um, Actually, that's a film, because uh, this movie is about the making of film. And don't be afraid at how big the book is, because a, there, a lot nice. of it, it's about half um, drawings. Right. And uh, it's a good one for, I'd say, middle grade kids, too. They could, sixth grade would yeah. be a good, good time to read this book. Uh, but great, great drawings along with a great story. Um, and it also was made into a movie that I think we all agree is a, oh, great is a fantastic movie. movie. Great movie. Uh, not exactly like the book just because they can't put all of it into um, the movie, but it's pretty close because a lot of this book the story is storyline is the same. But the point of this is, you know, we're talking about uh, National Book Lovers Day, tomorrow, August 9th, and um, my family loves books. And one of the things that we love to do, have loved to do uh, when my girls were little, is read together. And now they're older and they read on their own, and I'm thankful for that. But um, I would encourage you, if you've got, got little ones, um, Get a book out and read with your kids. Every uh, day. Yeah, you will enjoy it. They will enjoy it. Um, video games are great. Uh, we talked about that a couple weeks ago on the channel. You can check out that video right here. But um, there's nothing like sitting down together and just reading a book. And so, uh, so check that one out, Hugo Cabret. It, it's phenomenal, huge, I know. But um, your, your kids are gonna love it. Uh, you're gonna love it with pictures and uh, and just a great story there as well. Well, have you guys enjoyed it today? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Talking about some books. Um, so uh, I'll have everything down in the show notes. I, I would love to hear from you in the comments section what your favorite books are. Or what book have you read that uh, um, is better than the movie or the movie's better. Just, let's just talk about it a little bit. So put, put some stuff down in the comments there about that. If you are new to this channel, uh, make sure that you do give us a big thumbs up if you like this video. And of course they're going to like this video. Of course. Of course they Who are. doesn't like it? <laughs> and if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below to get these positive videos every single Thursday. Uh, and hit that bell to be notified when they do come out. All right? That is everything. That's just a little bit about me. I'm Mark. And Lisa. And Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna say it? And Emily. <laughs> just a bit about us to help you be more you. All right, what do we want to read? Um, um I like, the, I'm gonna read this one because school's about to start and I know I'll start with this okay. one probably. Right. I like it when he throws the me balls. What? Me balls. Oh! <laughs> I know what a me ball is. It's poop. <laughs>